it's just misogynistic and no, fucked up, dude. Okay, Am I a okay, okay, animal? Okay. What makes a high value woman? Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Me. What would you rate yourself out of 10? A million. I'm a queen. What do you think men select for in a woman, apart from arrogance? <laughs> I take issue with the high value aspect. I feel like that is rooted in capitalism. The question's really, what is a high value person? Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. not the question. The question is, what is a high value woman? Most men will lose respect for you if you put out too quickly. <laughs> I think that's just you being insecure. <laughs> Men are very insecure, caring about what their partner might be posting on social media. What you label insecurity, I would label healthy territorialism. I wear whatever the f I want. Why are you showing your butt to other men on Instagram? But it does, it just... Like if I was in a relationship with you and you uploaded that, I would take no, issue. You want attention from men for your butt. No, true or untrue? We need strong women that stand up for themselves Women who society. can follow a masculine lead? No, 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 no! Macho, 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 what is a high value woman? Also, I actually have pretty traditional values. So. This is very untraditional. I cook, I clean, and I don't complain about it. Push comes to shove, would you prioritize your career or family? What makes a low value woman? Do you think it's unattractive to have a high body count? Good question. Virginity is a social conference. Yeah! If a broke dude is a low value man, would you then say that an ugly woman is a low value woman? What is a low value woman? Uh, apparently me. I'm a single mom. I was promiscuous. Where do you think the kid came from? A high value man would very reasonably view your position and say, you're just not a quality mate. Because I'm not a high value woman. Yeah. Would you say that on average, men find overweight women less attractive? Men are attracted to skinny women. Can we find common ground on that? Yeah. I mean, thick thighs save lives. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode of Common Ground Conversations where we ask the important but controversial questions and then try to find common ground. In today's episode, we're gonna be asking the question, what is a high value woman? Let's see what people have to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, some context before we dive into today's episode. If you wanna skip my analysis of the question, here's a timestamp for the first convo. Let's do this. Generally speaking, men find women attractive and women find men attractive, go figure. Furthermore, there are some patterns to what each sex finds attractive in the other. Men are generally attracted to a particular set of traits and qualities in a long-term female partner, just as women are attracted to, generally speaking, certain traits and qualities in a long-term male partner. And some of these traits and qualities are the same. For example, both sexes tend to select for partners that are trustworthy, loyal, loving, etc. But unfortunately for those who rather annoyingly insist that men and women are the same, there are some notable differences in our respective attraction patterns. For example, men tend to value in a long-term partner more so than women do. One, physical attractiveness. Two, a caretaking or nurturing nature. Three, a low body count or a degree of sexual purity or non-promiscuity. Four, youth and fertility. And five, submission slash compliance slash an ability to follow the masculine lead when appropriate and generally speaking we could describe the amalgam of these qualities as feminine meanwhile women tend to value in a long-term partner more so than men do one financial success two physical strength and willingness to engage in combat three emotional composure or a stoic disposition four status and five assertiveness or leadership again generally speaking we could describe the amalgam of these qualities as masculine and these two terms masculine and feminine as well as the groupings of polar qualities that they describe are not just social constructs born of the patriarchy or capitalism. They are instead largely rooted in our biology and more specifically in one, our sexual nature, two, our altricialty, and three, our asymmetric parental investment as a species. Now, let me unpack each of those three terms in more depth here because they're important to understanding the big picture. Firstly, our sexual nature refers to the fact that our species, like many others, comes in two fundamental variants, male and female, barring exceptions, of course, for intersex individuals. To propagate the species and make a baby, the two sexes need to come together and you can fill in the rest. But beyond producing different reproductive cells or gametes, be it an egg or a sperm, males and females also vary in a myriad of other ways, including physiologically, anatomically, neurologically, etc. The list goes on. The point here being that males and females exist and they are different in a variety of important ways biologically. And that has implications for how we pair bond. More on that in a little bit. Moving on, altricialty refers to the fact that our species gives birth to babies that are fairly underdeveloped when compared to some other species. And what this means at essence is that human babies require a great deal of tending to and care after birth in order to reach full maturity and independence. And the follow on question then becomes where and from whom does this care and nurturing come from? And that brings us to the third term, asymmetric parental investment, also known as differential parental investment. This refers to the fact that men and women have different obligatory and non-obligatory investments in their offspring. So for example, 
couple. When a woman falls pregnant, if the baby is to survive, she must carry the pregnancy to term. There is no other way around it. There is no way to give birth to a new life without a mother's pregnancy. This is her obligatory parental investment. And it's no little investment either. Obviously, a nine month gestation period plus usually 18 ish years, maybe a little bit more of dependency afterwards is no joke. But here's where things get interesting. Is this the case for a man? No. Now, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, obviously, but a man's investment in a child is optional. It's not obligatory. And it's also not necessarily large. It can vary in size or degree. The father can be somewhat involved, very involved, or not involved at all. And this, by the way, is in large part why women are and should be more selective with their sexual partners. The price of sex and pregnancy is much higher for a woman as compared to a man. It's why men chase and women choose. Now, is that fair? Maybe not, but is it life? Yes, welcome to the game. So what does all of this have to do with what men and women select for in their partners? Well, as a consequence of those three things I've mentioned, our sexual nature, our altricialty, and our asymmetric parental investment, men and women select for different traits in long-term partners. Traits that tend to complement their own strengths, weaknesses, and vulnerabilities in order to maximize the probability of survival for themselves, their offspring, and ultimately their genes. And it's this selection of complementary traits that is at the essence of polarity in a relationship. Another way of putting all this is that men and women each have a slightly different sexual drive or imperative, what we might refer to as the masculine sexual imperative and the feminine sexual imperative. In a sentence, the masculine sexual imperative is find a high value woman or multiple high value women who can give birth to and nurture my healthy offspring to flourish. Meanwhile, the feminine imperative might be characterized as secure a high value man who can protect and provide for me and my offspring. And this is at the root of why we see the difference in attraction patterns between men and women. When women are pregnant or have highly dependent offspring, they're simply more vulnerable than they otherwise would be. And as such, they seek out partners who can actually contribute something of value to the relationship, like the ability to provide and protect physically and financially, like the ability to remain calm, composed, and in control, capable of dealing with unforeseen circumstances that might represent a danger to the mother or the child, like status and the respect of peers, such that if help is needed, a tribe is on call. And this is also why men tend to select for young women, fertile and healthy as they are, and why they find aging women less and less attractive. This is why men tend to select for beautiful women who have quality genes and who also take care of themselves and put some effort into looking good. If you can't do that, what makes you think that a man will trust you with their kid? It's also why men tend to find promiscuous women unattractive. There's an element of parental uncertainty, as well as some evidence that a woman's ability to pair bond decreases with her number of sexual encounters. And this is further supported by the observation that regular casual sex downregulates the release of the hormone oxytocin, which plays a crucial role in pair bonding. Further, having multiple sexual partners also devalues the significance of a woman's intimacy. Scarcity is at the root of all value. And as a woman, your intimacy is simply not valuable. It doesn't mean anything if it's too easily won or too widely accessible. And lastly, it's also why men tend to select for women who aren't career obsessed and who value family first, who are more feminine in their temperament, capable of trusting in and following the mature masculine lead once it has earned that trust. So now that we've covered what men and women tend to select for in long-term partners, as well as why they select for such traits from an evolutionary lens, in essence, because of everything I've mentioned, our sexual nature, our trishalty, asymmetric parental investment, the consequential seeking out of complementary traits that maximize one's probability of survival, as well as that of their genes and offspring, how does all of this relate to the idea of a high value woman? How is value in the context of the sexual marketplace determined? Well, put simply, take all the women, have men rank them with regard to attractiveness as long-term partners and the women at the top, they are the high value women, the women at the bottom, they are the low value women. And if you're uncomfortable with that terminology, you can swap out the terms high value or low value with high caliber or low caliber or even high quality or low quality. And we can do the same thing for men. Have the women rank all men with regard to attractiveness as long-term partners. The men at the top, they are the high value men. The men at the bottom, they are the low value men. And just as in any marketplace or social hierarchy, it's important to know and to teach young people especially, you don't determine your value, the marketplace does. So if I have a car and I list it for $100,000, but no one wants to buy it, is it really worth $100,000? Of course not. Its value is determined by other people in the marketplace, not my opinion. And the same logic applies to men and women in the sexual marketplace. Just because you say that you are a 10 does not make you one. So ladies, if men don't find you attractive as a long-term partner, 
partner, and no one wants to pair bond with you and have kids, it's not because there's something wrong with the men. It's because you're likely just a low value woman. Best look at that uncomfortable truth dead in the eye and do what you can about it as opposed to opting for the ignorant bliss that might come from cloaking your inadequacy in euphemistic female empowerment branding. Insisting that you are a 10, despite contrary evidence from the marketplace, isn't a boss bitch move. It's just socially accepted delusion. And gents, the same applies to you. If you think women have unreasonable standards of men and you're avoiding responsibility by pointing the finger at anyone else but yourself, best do a 180 because the odds are you're just a low value man making excuses for your inadequacy. Time to look in the mirror truthfully. Acknowledge all the ways you could be better as a partner and then get to work. Women seeking a long-term mate will not love you unconditionally the way your mum did, even if they say otherwise. Instead, they will love you conditionally. They'll select you for all the aforementioned traits. So aim up, work on yourself and become attractive. Do not shy away from the truth nor the ideal in the name of boyish comfort. Stop being a Jeffrey, step into becoming Adonis if you know you know. So why is all of this important? Why even ask the question, what is a high value woman as well as what is a high value man in the first place? For me, it comes down to this. Young women should not be told to think of themselves as untouchable tens. That is promoting delusion and delusion in whatever form we find it is unproductive. Instead, young women should know the truth about what men value and what it is they select for in a long-term partner. So if women would like to attract a high value man, they know how to become a high value woman themselves. And just quickly, this isn't just coming from a man who finds women attractive. I'm not just here lecturing women on who they should be. I'm speaking from the perspective of an elder brother to two beautiful younger sisters who I want the best for. I want them to be able to attract a high value man, but to do that, they must know what a high value man wants as well as how to become a high value woman themselves. I don't want them deluded into thinking they're tens if they're not. I only want them thinking they're tens if they are actually tens. And that comes from a place of love. And the same applies to young men. They shouldn't be told to think of themselves as unequivocally deserving of a woman's love, respect, and intimacy. That's the type of thinking that leads young romantically challenged lads pointing the finger at women and saying you're the problem. It's the type of thinking that leads to unproductive incel and MGTOW culture. Gents, mature women will love you conditionally as they should and you must earn their intimacy by becoming a high value man, not by remaining a boy. And zooming out a little bit, this same type of thinking can be applied more generally to life and is certainly a core tenet of both this channel and my personal life. Whatever the domain, situation or question at hand, we should choose the red pill over the blue pill, which is to say we need to confront uncomfortable truths head on and work with them as opposed to running away and choosing ignorant bliss, hiding unwanted things in the fog, ultimately playing the victim so as to avoid responsibility. With all of that as context, we spoke to a variety of people in today's episode. I've timestamped each conversation for you below. The footage is from two different days. One where we asked what is a high value woman slash man and another day where instead our sign said rate yourself one to 10 and we used that as a portal into the high value woman and man question. Last but not least, I want to hear from you. What do you think? What is a high value woman and what is a high value man? Point out where you agree or disagree with me and let's get a conversation going in the comments. I will see you there. With that said, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoy the episode. Let's now jump into conversation number one. Boom. What is a high value woman? And high value in the sense of what do men tend to select for in a woman? And then we can also ask the question, what do men tend to, uh, women tend to select for in a man? So. Okay. Tell me, what do you think? Um, uh, I take issue with like the like two aspects of this. One, like the high value aspect. Like I feel like that is rooted in capitalism, like trying to quantify someone's existence based on their personality or based on like certain traits that they exhibit. And like if they don't exhibit those traits, then they're just like not meant for society. Like I find that really rooted in capitalism. And then I also find why the, why is it rooted in capitalism? I don't well, get it. high value. You know, like quantifying someone based on like certain things. Like if and if someone doesn't meet that standard, then they're not you know, meant for society. That's kind of what that implies. Not necessarily. Um, I think it's like, I mean, why are these your friends as opposed to all these other people that you've met in your life? Because you value certain personality traits in those people. Okay. Is that capitalism? Well, no, I just think that like, you know, the term high value, like, would you guys go with that? Like it just kind of like fits in what kind of I mean, like, yeah, lives. measuring like a person with that sort of language, like in terms of value, it's almost like slightly it's like a measurement of like how worthy they are of like I guess any sort of societal. Okay. Okay. Can I? Can I? Can I? Yeah. Let, maybe let's see if we can get a clear definition and then see if we can find something we agree upon and then we'll build from there. So it's not necessarily a prescription of like in order to be high value, I say you have to do this, this, this. It's more so 
an observation of what do men tend to generally select for in long-term uh, partners within okay. women, and then vice versa, what do women tend to select for within uh, long-term male partners? Oh, okay, so we're just assuming that everyone's heterosexual. Uh, yeah, for the moment. For the moment, we'll okay. roll with it. Like I mean, we can get we can get specific if you like. But something different. Like, I don't think there's like to be a high value woman and to be like wanted by a man, you need to be pretty or like whatever. Like some men will like me because I'm like fucking weird as shit, and then some men won't, and then like that's fine. Like everyone has different tastes. Okay, so it doesn't have common ground. To do common with ground. Objective value. Where we can find common ground is that everyone has their own personal preferences. Right, you're gonna have a personal preference. I'm gonna have a personal preference. That might be a deviation from the norm as well, and that's completely all right. But that doesn't mean that we can't observe generalized patterns or trends with regard to what men and women tend to select for. So, what would you say men tend to select for in women? I just think in general, people, men, women, they just want to be with a good person. They want some. They want to be with someone who's got good manners, is respectful, you know, is kind, generous to other people. And I don't think like you need to say. I think everyone would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. to that to that extent, I'd say that like the the question's really what is a high value person like mm -hmm. yeah. and a woman? Men it's and the same. Yeah, but that's yeah. not the question. It's not the question. The question is what is a high value woman? But what's the difference? Yeah. yeah like great question. Side. Great question. Why, why, great question. Why is there different? I'll give my, you. I, my yeah, no. question is is that like what like where are these constructs coming from that like a high value woman is different to a high value man why are women held to a different standard than men so i'm assuming that you're, you're talking about like someone's body count how many people they've slept with what clothes they wear why is that such a focus for women but not a focus for men at all because that is a good question so i think it's two parts right one is that it's the what part of the question what do men select for in women what do women select for in men generally speaking but then there's that second part of the question which is the why why do we have these double standards? Why is there an asymmetrical pattern in what men and women are attracted to? So first, let's do the what, and then let's come to the why, if that's all right. Because I think there's a combination of biology as well as society, okay. say n nature and nurture. So generally speaking, if we were just, you know, we're not telling someone you have to be like this in order to live your life, whatever. Generally speaking, what would you say men select for within women? I just don't agree with the premise of the question that you're asking because, it, again, like everyone's different, and I don't think that there's a generalized statement for what men would select in women. I mean, um, we're all part of different social circles anyway, so the normal for what men want is different dependent on social circles. I'm, I'm looking at society at large. We might society even just say large, we might I think they we might just even want to meet friendly, kind people. I disagree. Can I can I drop in a couple? Yeah, I'll share with you, and then you tell me what you disagree with, and we'll we'll see if we can pick it apart a little bit. So. I would say that uh, men tend to select for women who are physically attractive uh, and who tend to be a fair bit younger as well because those, both of those things can be signs of fertility and a good gene set. Uh, beyond that, I think they also select for a caretaking or nurturing nature. They want to know that not only can they be taken care of uh, in certain instances, but also that if they were to have children with this person, with this woman and engage in a long-term relationship, that this woman would be capable of taking care of the children. Can I just ask? With let me that? let me give you just a couple more, and then let's let's unpack it. I would also say uh, you mentioned body count. I think that's also quite important to to men, generally speaking. Um, even it, to go one step further, I think that overly promiscuous behaviour is quite a turnoff for men. Um, whether it's photos online or dressing, showing more cleavage, whatever. Um, that can also be a turn off to men um, or to certain men. So if we just take those three to start with, tell me what you disagree with and let's let's see where we can find common ground and where we can So come. on the point of fertility, like I'll be realistic, maybe we're coming from different perspectives. I don't know how old you are. We're all early, like I'm 19, early 20s. Yeah. Like, I don't really think, I, I disagree with the premise saying that we're thinking about like, oh, how fertile is women going to be? Especially like if you're in your, I don't know, late teens, early 20s, like I, I would challenge you to find like 10 people that would actually That's a great really point. consider, yeah, really yeah. consider yeah. that. So our, our, our preferences might actually change with time. So I'm late 20s. That's definitely something that I consider. It's like I, don't, I simply do not find older women attractive. And, but most, most men around that 20s range would agree with that. Even, even men, some men in their 30s would find generally younger women more attractive. And if you, if you look at sexual marketplace value graphs where men have rated when they find women most attractive and women have rated when they find men most attractive physically, uh, the uh, 
uh, the peak for women is much earlier than it is for men. So anyway, that's, that's, I think there's some data to back up the observation that I'm making there, even though we disagree. Yeah, I just, again, I just don't think that's something that people really consciously consider or even subconsciously consider. I don't think that's something that re people really factor in. Like, if, let's say hypothetically that I was to meet someone who I found really attractive, but they were, you know, 35? 35 would probably, I doubt I'd be on the same emotional wavelength as them. I've just been a different point in my life. I think do, you think you, do, do you think, do you ever find a 35 year old woman physically attractive? Show me a 35 year old woman and I'll tell you if she's attractive or not. I don't know. I would say you're much more likely to find a younger girl attractive than a 35 year old woman. Yeah. Whereas I, I don't think it's necessarily the other way yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really go and look at every Exceptions single... don't necessarily prove the rule. I don't, I tell I, that. Generally, I wouldn't, you know, even think about like, oh, I'm passing a 35 year old woman. Do I think she's attractive or not? Like, that's not really something I'm going to be considering. And also, I think like, I don't know, maybe maybe 20 years ago, people might have considered like, I don't know, just things like physical attractiveness, body count, like maybe they would have considered that an important thing to them. I'm not saying I agree with that, I do disagree yeah. with that. But more so now, like people value emotional connection, um, you know, just as much as physical attraction. Yeah, if dude, absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I agree. Think, I think like... I think it's, you can't you can't have a prosperous relationship without that deeper emotional connection. I think that's where yeah. we could all find. So my question I know is, I know that you need to make a move pretty soon. One, I, yeah, I did want to come to. Question. Yeah, go. Uh, well, I, w I wanted to ask you. I, feel free to ask me as well your question, but I did want to ask you because we bookmarked the why. Why do you think there is this asymmetrical attraction patterns within what men tend to value in women and what women tend to value in men? Well, it all comes down to gender. Like you said that there was a biological basis and like, yeah, in terms of um, fertility, 100%, like there is a body clock and pressure, but that comes down to if someone wants a child. So I, you're linking someone wanting a child in a relationship as a factor and then linking that to attractiveness, which I don't know whether like that's relevant really. Um, and I also just like, can I just jump in really quickly yeah. there? I would just say that most men and most women want to have kids. Yeah, totally. Um, so that would be a factor for a relationship. But you know what's really interesting is that... But not for everyone. That, yeah, and totally. But you know what's really interesting is that a lot of women are actually infertile and actually can't have children. And a lot of men as well also have yeah. fertility issues. I think that's actually a hard, a hard, hard and uncomfortable truth. But being infertile makes you a lower value woman. And I think but you would say the same thing for men. men. Yeah, I, I think the same applies to men. Okay, yeah. so like, why aren't you coming at it from the perspective of what a man wants to see in a man? Uh, sorry, what a woman wants to see in a man. Well, that's, that, we're doing that as well, but oh. I, 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 I would say it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's generally speaking, people are more willing to ask the question, what do women find attractive in men? What do women reasonably expect from men uh, if they want to be in a long-term relationship with them? Uh, people aren't as comfortable asking this question, which is, what is a woman? Uh, sorry, what is a woman? What is a high value woman? Patriarchal society. Yeah. We hear it non stop. And like what you said. What do you like, mean? What do you mean we hear it non stop? Because I, I, I very rarely hear people in public talk about what makes a woman high value. What? Whereas I hear, not, I hear plenty, plenty of talk about what makes a woman high value. Yeah, we do like, gotta run, but. Yeah. You know, really really well, hey, thanks for engaging in the conversation. I appreciate it. I've Take care of yourself. If you wanna, if Go quickly. I'm just conscious that you guys are all going to the same thing. Go. Like just in terms of like people caring about what their partner might be posting on social media or how many people they've slept with, I think it comes down to insecurity. Like a lot of people, but men are very insecure and they feel threatened by the fact that if they're with if they're in a relationship in their twenties, their partner's probably slept with a few people, they've probably got experience and that like that shouldn't be something that people feel threatened by. And that's quite concerning if people are, you know, getting so hurt over the fact that, oh, maybe their partner feels good about how their body looks and they want to post it on social media. Okay, give media. me 30 seconds to answer this. One, I would say that uh, you, what you would label perhaps insecurity, I would label healthy territorialism. I think there is a well, certain- sense of ownership, you mean? No, territorialism. Is it boundaries? Take, ta no, it's taking responsibility for this woman. Uh, and, and, and also, also I would say uh, in terms of like body count and promiscuity, there's some, I think there is a good biological reason as to why men might find that unattractive. Part of it is that there are other male, it's attracting more male attention. And again, that comes back to the territorial nature. Are we really in this together? If let's say for example, you're a woman, we're in a long-term relationship. Are we really committed to one another? If you're posting provocative shots of your boobs online to get male attention, I'd be very questioning of okay. that. And then but also, and then, and then, and then, and then, that's kind of a, yeah, that's One assuming second. they're into Well, yeah, okay, well, there's, also, a, there, hey, there's a big, there's a big. Be, I don't want to have a male be responsible. Like, 
that's not a healthy dynamic. For also, that assumes biologically well, that I mean, people have been monogamous your, since the beginning of time, yeah, which is just actually true. false. You're kind of on the basis we're that someone needs one sexual. We're pair bonding creatures. No, that's not true because we're actually um, like not necessarily need one sexual partner. That's how society has kind of um, Western society has kind of portrayed that in recent years but if you look to other cultures other religions um, indigenous cultures for example um, uh, lots of different kind of pairings and um, kinship systems are at play yep. um, so large majority it's monogamous true. though that's that's where we might have to disagree yeah majority but right, yeah, that's not good. biological yeah. hey yeah. have a lovely day thanks for showing your position I appreciate it have a lovely day take care take care I would say the same to you as in like um, in the sexual so marketplace what, does that mean? what do men tend to select for in a uh, long term female partner uh, I feel like there's no right answer to that. It just average. depends on the person. On Someone who's interesting, loyal, yep. fun, attractive to them. Yeah. Yep. Physically attractive, fit. Do you agree? Yeah. Whatever is attractive to whoever they're with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you and I definitely find common ground on that. But I'm, there are averages. So what do you men. what do you think is a high value woman? Okay, so on average, I would say men select for or value physical attractiveness more than women value it in men. I'd say uh, men value fertility and youth. Fertility and youth. So how do you judge that? Well, age would be a, an example. Older women so uh, tend like, to be less attractive. So like 30 plus, 30 plus, 35 so plus, less attractive. So what if you're a fucking 40 year old? You would go for 20 year olds because they're fertile and youth, young? Depends. If you want to have kids, yeah. You don't think you don't think older women can have kids? Well, for, what do, are we, can we find common ground that the older you get, the more it is harder a bit more it is to have kids? I agree. I agree. It's not, it's not just a bit more difficult. It becomes impossible. But I also think that a lot of men don't want to have kids. In fact, it's usually it's usually yeah. women that want to have like long-term relationships you? and want to settle down and have kids, whereas men don't. You know? Yeah. So I, th I think we did find. You don't common, think so? I, th I think we did find common ground on, on that. Like men, on average, select for. Women who are fertile, we find. Is that what you? Fertile I don't like the term fertile. Like so, that's a. So are you looking for someone that's fertile? Can come to you in a second. Because who just des who describes someone as fertile? Like. Are you well, like? Am I a fucking animal? animal? Like to, to describe me child. as a fertile? Capable huh? of bearing a child. Everyone is capable of bearing a child unless they're like. Sorry, are they you have something single? medically. Can I ask? Preventing them from doing that. We can come to you in a second, mate. I would also say um, men tend to select for, on average, women who don't have short hair. Who don't have short hair? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have so 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 short hair. So what about short hair? Why do you think so? To you? That's where we could, you have we could short come hair. to personal preference. So are you and infertile? you would find someone that's true, who yeah. is attracted to that. Personal, personal, personal say, on, preference on average, is, a, is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. On average, men would select That's why I think it's difficult to say average. on average because it's really dependent on your personal preference. You don't think so? Okay, yeah, no. Can, can I tell you why I think it's why I think there's value in it? Because maybe that's part of where we might disagree is why it's a good question. I think there's value to asking what do men find attractive in women and what do women find attractive in men? Yeah. Because, say as an example, if I want to attract uh, a high-value woman, it's my responsibility to become a high-value man. And vice versa, if a, if a woman would like to attract a high value so man. So, what is a low no value saying, woman? That's a very good question. What would you say? No, in I'm the asking you. Well, I'm out here asking people to know. What do you, you raise the question about I'm intrigued a low value because woman? So, what is this? This just seems like a misogynistic interview, which is okay. why I was asking I'll, you. I'll give a couple of. I'll give a couple of. Yeah. Uh, what statements, and you tell me whether you agree or disagree. I think a low value woman is very promiscuous. Why is it Why? Like low value to you? Makes, her, un makes, makes her unattractive. Why? I think that. Jess, do you think a, a lady who has a high body count is she Okay, but, but the question I asked was why, though. I don't know, I'm just here for a fuck time. But why does that make them less less valuable to you? It makes them unattractive. I'm just but why? Am I more to question again? Bro, you so don't have an answer, my guy. Like, yeah. What do you think about like, women with Tell high me body count? Why does that count? seem like, less attractive? Is that like. What? what I'm, the reason why I'm thinking is why? Why, why should I even answer why that is? Right? Why, I have a sexual Bro, you preference. can't answer, you listen, can't, listen, you listen, can't answer boy, why listen, with a why though. Listen, if, if I have a sexual preference, yeah. and So your sexual on, preference is a virgin. If, if you would like to listen to me for a I'm ready to listen. On average, men find it unattractive for women to be promiscuous, right? Are you going to find someone unattractive if they're not a virgin? There's a difference between being a virgin and being promiscuous. 
right? But you're, you're telling me, if someone's a virgin, they're more attractive to you. A girl with a lower body count is definitely more attractive. Okay, but if they're a virgin, are they more attractive to you? But 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 the question I ask high value man that's other people speak. So yeah. so you're so you're telling me. What do you think makes a high value man? I'm interested in that. A high value man is someone who doesn't care about what someone's sexual past is. Because it doesn't matter. Quite frankly, it doesn't. So do you think? Well, I mean, I've I've been sexually active. What Why? else? You, what else do you think makes high value man? Someone who literally looks past that. Yeah. What who, else? Who, Give me something else. I, I've said it. What do females select for in a man in a long term partner? I don't f care. Because I know but what I look for. I'm confident enough in my own. And smart and yeah. interesting. So, I sorry, you didn't give me an answer. Though. You really didn't give me an answer. plays a factor because of anything. If someone has been with more partners, that means that they have more experience, open to new experiences. Okay. Depends, you, like you know? Like, are they being unsafe? That would be a whole different thing. I would judge their character for that, you know? Yeah. Is that what, 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 the what, number, what? though? What does that mean to you? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Also, do you question. think it's that's fair? Do you think it's fair for can I, can a woman? I answer that question real quick? Thank that was rhetorical. Okay. But do you think it's fair okay. for a woman yeah. to say that oh, I can't be with guys who have high high body counts because that's totally. not attractive? No, no, yeah, totally. So it's not a one way thing. No, no, absolutely not. Not at all. No. I do. I do think. It's, but do you I, think I, it's? No, yeah. I, I do think it's more unattractive like, to men Jews. than it is to women. <laughs> Why? And, yeah. To, I was asking myself the same question. I think part of it is that hey, women, women who sleep with lots it's of men, like it, it cannot be a sign of high value. Why? Whereas, I mean, oh, okay, because men have a lower criteria for who they'll sleep with. They're generally less selective. Yeah. Whereas a man who sleep now, I'm not saying a high value man sleeps with a lot of women, but a high value man, someone who sleeps with a lot of women, that can be a man. That can be a reflection of high value. Someone who sleeps with a lot of women is high value. It can be a reflection that he's attractive you to a lot of women. You just told me that the only reason we stopped it's not a one-way street. But there are double standards. Exactly. There are asymmetric. Do you think pattern. that's? Do you think that's fair to have a double standard? Depends what you mean and by also, yeah. the whole premise of name, this about value, yeah. I find really problematic because I Where feel like. Running? Describing someone as low value demeans their character and their personhood. Who are you to tell them whether they're low value or not? In the, in the You're a person, in dude. The in the sexual marketplace, having sex is not a marketplace. You're not selling or buying things like you would in a marketplace. But well, when you're trying to find a long term partner, you are in a market. You're not in a marketplace. You are. Who told you you're in a marketplace? Whether you like it or not, you're in a marketplace. Facebook. Says you? That's your opinion. Okay, well, I guess it maybe it comes down to our definition of market. What is if a market? If you're looking for a long. A market is buying and selling goods. Yeah, it's like an economy. If you're if you're finding a a partner and you have certain selection criteria, they also have certain selection criteria. There is a market. Right? You're looking for. That's a particular, not a market, though. That's, that's not, not a market? market. You're looking for a particular. Right. A market There's, implies. What's the Buying and selling. You're giving okay, something up and to getting, be getting, getting something in return. Getting caught up in because I think so. word choice really matters. When you're calling someone low value, that's f***ed up. You don't think so? You're describing someone as low value. That's what? literally you're attacking their... Stripping. Yes, Hold you're, on, you're, you're stripping... stripping. Context, yeah. No, I'm not stripping it of context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you should understand the, the how important is what I've, is what word I've choice is. No, I understand. It's you why don't, I'm, though. Well, who are you to say that I don't? Because that's just misogynistic and no, fucked up, dude. Right, on a subjective, on a, on a subjective level, on an is objective it, is it, level, not is subjective. It, is it what misandry for me to ask this gentleman what is a high value man? I don't think you should be, be describing anyone based on their value, because that doesn't come from whether you have a high body count or whether you're promiscuous or whatever the fuck you're describing as a high value or a low value. I can understand that are, that are, that are having certain exactly a that makes sense. Which makes you a, a high value or low value? No. Long term partner. I can understand having certain preferences. What you think is attractive may not be attractive for other people. That makes sense. I would find problem with describing that as a marketplace. And also with describing that yeah, and assigning a certain value that. to someone. Okay, what if I said, what if I, if I were to change my language? What you if should. I, listen, what if I said, high caliber man, would that change it? No, like that's just, 
you say one piece, I'll Okay, so you tell me what word you would use. You, listen, listen. You tell I don't want to have this conversation. Okay, okay, sure. Can I have your YouTube channel? Of course. Though? Common Ground Conversations. Common Ground Conversations? Yeah. Okay. That's why you That's kept telling me videos. Common Ground. Hey, I'm still interested in your answer. What makes but you didn't give me an answer. answer though. What did you want an answer? Because you devalued women by your answer though. What did you want an answer? I asked you what, why you value women based on their body count. I think part of it is because if it's if your intimacy, yeah. if a woman's if I'm dating a woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's given her intimacy away to everyone, yeah. what does it really mean to me? Exactly. What does it mean to you? What value does it have? But, but, but it, why do you have to away? value it though? Why do you have to evaluate someone based on their body count? Well, I thought you were. That, that's no, 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 no. So no, 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 no. Answer that question, though. What? Why do you value someone based on their body count? If she slept with a lot of with but, a lot but, of but, men, but, but, people you the best. You ask me a question, then you don't. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. If she slept with a lot of men, yeah, her intimacy doesn't mean anything if Why? you have sex. Why? Because intimacy, intimacy by definition, the value means the the the, the sorry, relationship. Yeah. Sorry, what's up? Uh, just a typical uh, part of, part of just, a, just, a, no. oh, yeah, just a typical beta male. Part of the value comes from its scarcity. Why? If a woman has been physically intimate with a large number yeah. of men, her physical intimacy doesn't mean as much to me. Why? Because it's not scarce. But why? Why does scarcity have anything to do with it? Why are you so insecure in yourself? Its value comes from but but its where does the value come from scarcity? If at the end of the day, if you're so insecure in yourself that you value someone else's attachment to you based on the attachment she has to other people, are you in a relationship? I am. With a with a woman? He, yes. Yeah. I'm just curious. But but what? But answer that question though. Why does your scarcity? Why is that based on yeah, her yeah. attachment to other people? I, I'm trying to give you. Why are you not confident in yourself? No, I am confident in myself. But you don't seem that way. I, if you're I'm, you're I'm basing it on other people. If you let me finish. Okay, but tell me I'm wrong. If 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 you're if you're if the partner that you're with, listen. Yes. If the partner that you're with, sure. Shares her intimacy with other people. But does it mean less to you? No, because intimacy by definition is separate to every other person. Wait, so you're you're okay with your woman sleeping with other men? At the end of the day, if she doesn't do it at the same time she's with me, of course. Because okay. at the end of the day, my intimacy with her is separate to her intimacy with other people. Well, I guess that's that's for you to decide then. Hey, because you're absolutely you're, right. Because you you, you value you that person based on her intimacy with other people. You you clearly don't feel confident enough in your own intimacy with her. You can't provide what she's clearly missing out on on on, on your own self. Which I, I, didn't I mean. Understand what you just said. Perhaps, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase it for you, yeah, right? So, I'm confident in my own self that what I provide to my partner... Probably a bit too confident. I, for you, maybe, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and that's that's fair enough. Divide that between confidence and arrogance, go on. I mean, you're saying that with the questions you're asking as go it on. is, right? But I'm confident in myself in that the reason my partner is with me is because at the end of the day, she's comfortable with the fact that the intimacy I provide to her is satisfactory. Whereas you value her intimacy based on the, um, the amount of people she's been with. Which is kind of a red flag. You you value her based on the amount of people she's been with. Yeah, red As flag. We're not compatible. Have a lovely night, mate. You too, bro. Hey, you what's too your bro. name? Uh, my name is Dylan. Dylan. But look, I'm hey, even so though, sorry. Even, even though we disagree. I, 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 look, I, I hope, I, I I hope, hope you, you find, find the confidence within yourself. You've got it. You're a handsome bloke. I hope that you can find that within yourself. Very generous of you. What do you think, what do you think gives men the ick? What makes a what makes a low value woman? What turns a guy off? Do you think? Oh. Um, what turns a guy off? What turns a guy off? It why just why depends else? on their that opinion. Too much talking. <laughs> but like in the bed, in That's the bed. Why Don't judge do think, a book by its do cover. It's unattractive to most men when they're selecting for a long term partner. Do you think it's unattractive to have a high body count? No. Andrew, what is my what their body no, count for is? Men. I think a lot of them tend to say it is, but I don't see why. No, it's not an issue. I don't see why they think it's an issue. I don't think it is an issue. No. <laughs> Most men find it unattractive okay, when why a woman is, that? is promiscuous or has a high body count. But for a guy it's cool. But for a guy it's cool, so it's a double yeah, standard. Can I just ask why? Yeah, well, I don't think it's necessarily cool. I think it's also unattractive. It's like, let's say you were dating someone. Yeah, like, I, like if I was dating someone, it's my, it's my personal choice. Like, I wouldn't date someone if I thought that was wrong. Like, uh, saying they probably wouldn't date me if that was it. But, like, I think it's just, like, people's personal opinion and their choice. What, sorry, you were going to ask a question. What, um, why do you think it's unattractive for a girl to have a high body count? 
Yes. Yeah, so, I'd like oh, to know that as well. Yeah, good question. Good Virginity question. is a social construct. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think it's it's very attractive when a woman values her intimacy. He's a virgin. But what, what about you? Like, but is that's it the not same that's not the way question. You can value your inti intimacy and still have a high body. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of value comes from scarcity. So if you give your body and your intimacy away to lots of people, it doesn't mean anything if we're empty. Would you agree with that? Yeah. When a woman does that, they're just seen as a slut. But when a man does that, it's like they're hot. Yeah. Is it the same? Do, would you say it's hot for a man to have multiple sexual partners or sleep around? No, it's about who they are. It's not about, about, it's not about, it's about who they are. how many bodies okay, you have. Okay, well, so, so what, one distinction I want to draw here. I think most men and women find it unattractive is if their partner is promiscuous, right? I think we can find common ground there. But I think it's more of a... Uh, this is getting with, really deep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop, drop one thing and then you guys should get. Yeah. So, what, uh, a, a man who has access to an intimacy... An accent is hot. Oh, no. Access. Oh. To access. To, 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 an accent is hot. Sexual, sexual opportunity with lots of women is a reflection of his high value. Right? He's attractive to a lot of women. Whereas a woman... Whereas a woman who has... A woman who has access to intimacy with a lot of men isn't necessarily a high value woman because men well, that shouldn't men have much so men, because hold on listen because men have much lower standards with regards to who they sleep with um, would you agree I with that? So. You, I would not agree yeah I, I, I don't, don't think, I don't think you can just say like men or women everyone's different so you can't yeah. just it's like all men think no, we, no but we're, we're looking at averages and generalizations yeah ladies I don't want to hold you up too much you have a lovely yeah, night just you, just, you just remember just remember just remember that men on average find fit Young, low body count women more attractive. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody gives a f. Men work. Couldn't care less. Don't, don't, don't you want a long term partner? Yeah, I'll find yeah. someone who yeah. accepts me for me. I don't care what am. men yeah. want. No, I fucking scared. You can have your own opinion. That is completely yeah. fine. Body count but just don't expect everyone to have yeah. those same opinions. No, that's body counts were just invented to, to shame women and make yeah. men feel like. Like the term body count and like virginity. Like the, just, they, they weren't they weren't invented by to, as like just some social construct. There's a, there's, a reason, there's a reason there's a there, nah, there's a reason why men are unattracted to women with high body count. Right. Have a lovely evening. See you. Take care. Bye. What makes a high value woman? What do you think men select for in a woman? Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Me. What would you rate yourself out of ten? A million. I'm a queen. What do you think men select for in a woman? Apart from arrogance. <laughs> now you said that I didn't. H what oh, else? I think I think men respect class. A woman who respects herself, I think a man respects even more than a woman who's just, you know, I I am no I am no. I look. I'm not. I don't start shame. I want to dress like a. Slut, I'll dress like a slut. That's just a word. But personally, I don't like to reveal all because whatever. Like I'm not really interested in showing all my skin for all, you, all of you people to stare at. Uh, yeah, I think that's for you so, and your partner. Well, that's for me and whoever I want to show. If I want to show you, I want to show you, and you pay me $100, whatever. But I'm not going to ah, do that. See, I would but say I, that's, but I'm not going to do that. I would say that's a low-value woman. But that's not... Woman. No, but those... Right. No, I would disagree with you. I disagree with you. That's a Why? job. That's a job. Some people have no option. Some people, that's all they have. That's all they're able to do in that moment in time. I disagree. Well, what disagree. about Cardi B's doing well better than you? Yeah. So, and she was a dancer. Yeah, I wouldn't say that she exactly demonstrated a high value woman behavior though. I think she demonstrates a fantastic woman behavior. Interesting, I would not want my sister's role modeling after Cardi I, B. I would, she's a hard working woman. Okay, the would you, what, what, would, what would your partner think of that? If you if you said, hey, I want to role model Cardi B, would he be like, yeah, power to you, babe? I don't know where he is right Interesting, now. all right, well, hey. Getting my luggage. I'll leave you to you and your partner. Have a lovely time in Melbourne. What's a high value woman? A high value woman is someone that um, stands up straight and crosses her legs. It's just like be ladylike, be polite. To give you some context, yes. our, our channel's called Common Ground. Common Ground. So we want to we want to try and find common ground. So I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna, I know. I've seen these. What is these. a high value woman? I'm gonna give a couple of things that tell I think me. make a high value woman. Yes. And then you tell me whether you agree or disagree. Okay. 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 Oh she doesn't put out too quickly. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Put out. Put out. Put out. Put out. Put out. Put out. It yeah. doesn't matter. Uh, she's feminine in her temperament. Doesn't matter. I mean, you can kind of be. 
you know, whatever way you want. If you choose to be feminine, then okay. you can portray yourself you can, as feminine. But you tend, if you're if you're too masculine, it's a turn off for most yeah. guys. Well, okay. True, true, Especially true, high true, value true. men. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What else? Um, Personal preference. She knows how to follow the masculine lead when when it's appropriate. What do you yeah. mean? So like, some people, some people might say submissive or compliant. I'll be submissive. Yes. Cheeky. Cheeky. What's what question? else? What else? You think of anything else? With what a high value woman. Okay. She's attractive. I think someone that just respects herself and respects yeah. others yeah. and respects um treats everybody with, with respect. respect. So if we flip that, do you think a low value woman puts out too quickly? Yes. No. I, think, I don't think so. I think everybody, like, they can choose what they want to do. It doesn't quite matter. If they want to put out quickly, then who cares? But if they well, it don't... It, it makes them unattractive to the large majority of Not really, because if they're putting out that quickly, they're usually getting a man. As a long-term long partner. I mean, not really. You could probably... You could have sex with someone on the same night and then end up dating them. Yeah. yeah, but I think, hey, most, most men will lose respect for you if you put out too quickly. I think that's just you being insecure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's most most men don't like high body counts and high levels of promiscuity. But then if guys but like high body count, but yeah, if the girl has a bi high body count, then clearly the guys don't care. I'm hungry. Can if, we if, leave? You, if you have a high body count, it is it okay matter. for me to have a high body count? I would say that it's more unattractive for a woman to have a high body count than but it is. Well, that's just sexist. Hard. No, that's just yeah. so like we're not no, in the nineteen twenties no, anymore. No, 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 no. I think it's rooted in biology. It's written in biology. Close. So really quickly, I'll give you a little evolutionary psychology okay, lesson. Okay, go. Please. So... Just listen. No, sorry, no, sorry, no, no, we no. When, let's say for example we were dating. Yeah. And you, you were being promiscuous or you were dressing up in a very sexual manner. Yeah. If you have multiple sexual partners or encounters and you get pregnant, I don't know whether it's my kid. So I don't know whether to provide... But usually the girl would know. Like, usually the girl would be like, you know what, it's going to be him. Yeah. But so this is this is why it's more of a... There's more, there's a stronger disgust response in men when women are being promiscuous than uh, when men are being promiscuous. But men so can be whores too. Let me, let me, That's I agree. just as much hey, as I agree a turn off I agree for women. You. What I can say is that a high... Women have... Men are less selective with their sexual partners. Can we find common ground on that? Yes, as in like they'll just go for anything that has a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so women, women are the ones who generally select within the sexual partner. I would yeah. say, Men yeah. chase, yeah. women choose type of thing. Yeah. Agreed. So, beyond that, mm -hmm. a woman who puts out for a lot of men, it's not a sign of high value. Whereas a man who has access to or the yeah. opportunity to be intimate with a lot of women, that, that is a reflection of his high I think that if you're young, you're hot, and you don't really care, and you're just like looking for a good time, then like it doesn't mean much. If you're looking for a long-term relationship, and like you're looking to pursue something with someone, then don't go around like, you know, you say, spreading you your say, legs, you say, but like, yeah, you it's say, each to their own, really. Yeah, but I, I, I guess I would, I would encourage, like I have two younger sisters, right? So yes. I would very much encourage them to be aware of the fact that if they have multiple one-night stands, it makes them very unattractive to the large majority of men as a long-term partner. But I think, so, like, so nowadays, do, do that at you, your own. Like, is that not you just being insecure? Well, unless you want to say that all men are insecure. But, well, like, maybe. I can see for all these boys, I don't think they would care. Like, <laughs> Ladies, hey, you've been a delight to speak to. I hope you have a lovely <laughs> <We're roasting. laughs> Thanks for sharing. Oh, thanks Wait, what, what, what did you roast me on? That, that we're right and women rule and men suck. Okay, bye. You heard it we're here done. first, ladies we're and done. gentlemen. What gives you the ick for men? If um, they sleep in a single bed. Yes! Yes! <laughs> or them crawling on the floor. Like, if boys crawl, that's just not good. Or if they don't who, have who, their toenails all fours. Who is this one been dating? Who are you, are you dating? <laughs> right. I've, never, I've never crawled in my life. <laughs> what, what else? Another what else, one not, what no, else gives you the ick? Who's been as like a supreme bed? So, an ick? You crawl, like if you don't brush your teeth or you don't clip your toenails, just like general hygiene. I remind yeah. you to keep brush hygienic. Your teeth. <laughs> I think also, I think also the part of the over. reason, He's part lying. of the reason for that, if you can't take care of yourself, say for example you can't, you can't groom, a man can't groom, how is he supposed to provide and protect for you and the family? I think that's part of the reason why we have. Why, when I say we, why women tend to have an if when a man is not well groomed. Yeah, yeah, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Like, like yeah, if you're not well groomed, it's like a bit of an ick, like it's a bit unhygienic. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean vice versa. Yeah, what else? What else gives you the ick? We know a girl, that's why. I had a when they're mean to their mother. Yeah. Oh, good one. Yeah. Like, adore the earth that your mother walks on. 
Are you yeah, still on the mall? It's a bit much, but yeah. No, no it's not. It's if they're rich, you've got a nice shop. Love, value for family. If they're rich, their mum, it's an instant turn off. Hey, what about, uh, what do you think gives guys the ick? Um, apart, from, uh, apart from high body count. I've already um, touched on that one. Whatever. Yeah. I would say that um, <laughs> boys probably get the ick. I don't know. I think yeah, boys just think with their d like, hey, okay, really okay. Can I can I throw one out? You tell me whether you agree or not. Okay, go. If a girl dresses too sexually, that's does that hard. does that no. give you the ick? No, okay, that's, that's, not. Not. No, that's no. pretty hard. If your yeah. missus if your no, mi if your missus wore a dress, wait, wait. I don't know. I don't know. If if your missus dressed with a uh, wore a dress that showed her nipples to everyone. Okay, here's the thing. Would that be a red flag? If the woman is confident enough to wear what that is, then that is good on her because she has my boyfriend to do it. So you're like you're like yes, I can. I wear whatever the. No. I want. I can't tell what to wear. Guy, this guy, this guy, he's just like because at the heart. at the end of the day, they know that <laughs> you're there, and it just doesn't matter. If you're an insecure man, you will not. I mean, See, if you're I a secure man, man, you will not care what your girls wear. I disagree. I agree with that. Yeah. No, if you're secure, I think it's. I also think you're looking at you're looking at the real life. I also think it can be it can be a sign of disrespect to the man. No, but that's just me. I think you, I don't think that you're being secure. I think you're what just about, asking hey, what that about, question for these views. No, 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 no. What? What? Because I mean, like, like I said, I have two younger sisters. I think it's good for them to be aware of this. What about uh, posting sexually provocative pictures on Instagram? You want to say my Instagram? Let's see it. Pull no, it up. What would you say is a provocative photo? Maybe that one. Right here, guys, yeah. in South Bay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, I don't know. I've got a few like beach. Bikini summertime. Cheeky beach, beach shots. Um, like this one, like not that bad. Yeah, see, okay, so if you're in a relationship, why would you post that? Okay, because you, I love my no, body, no, I love you, myself, do you think this one's first. too much? But why, why do you need to why do you need to post it like that to to show that you love your body? Because I work hard for my body, I eat well, I work out, and I'm gonna show the world that I love myself and I work out and I work hard for this body. What about this one? Is and this if my boyfriend food? had a problem with it, he wouldn't be my If boyfriend. I was in a relationship with you and you uploaded that, I would take oh, issue. I'm okay. gonna take your shoe. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, why are you showing your butt to other men on Instagram? But it does. It just like if you're why are you? if you're secure in yourself and you're if you're trust me. My boyfriend doesn't matter. matter. But this this so makes me, this, you, this no, makes me not trust you. If I'm with you. you, then it's only you. So it doesn't matter. Well, okay. But then why would you why would you post your butt on Instagram? Because Don't I look hot. Yeah, Tell me I look hot. That's all that matters. But if we went through your following, hold on, hold on. Following Michaela, you, Tess, you Star, Kylie, Jenna, you, you Kendall, tell me. You tell me. You tell me whether you agree. I would right, say. Uh, I you, you, hold on. You, you, hold on. You, if I listen. Your listen. 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 Right listen. now, how many women yeah. with their asses out do so you follow? You do you want to have a look? Oh, I'll show you. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Would I would say that you've uploaded this because you want attention from men for your butt? True or untrue? Untrue. Why? Because. I know I if look you look at someone, it, all the all the like comments I'm are girls hyping her up. Girl but then, power. but then why why would you why would you not just post like you wearing what you're wearing tonight? Why would you post something that shows your butt on Instagram? If because if, it's if, 2020 if, if, too. Like there's no laws around what women can do and women cannot do. Sure, sure, sure. But but I'm, what I'm saying is that if you here, I'll stand here so it's not in your face. You're uploading a photo to get attention from people who no, look at your butt. Not. But it's, it's not, not for attention. It's because it's I like know making, I look good, so I'm going to post but it. But it's also like, but then, it's 20 Hold on, but then why Why would you post it if you don't want attention? Because it's for our own. It's for our own, like, just like, yeah, it's a confident But then why don't boost. you just, why you just have it on your hard drive? Why it's put a confident it on boost if you get a like, yeah, for sure. But, like, it's also like, you know, I go to the gym, I work hard, I eat well. I've danced my whole life, like I've okay. worked for this I want to say one more thing, it. and you tell me whether you agree. Go. I would say, let's say for example you weren't in a relationship, yep. and you were posting very sexual stuff online, yep. perhaps like take that but then dial it up a couple of notches. I would say that that might attract a lot of male attention, but it won't attract the type of male but attention. But that doesn't mean we're asking hold on, hold for on, it. Let, let me finish. It won't attract high value male attention. It'll attract men who are like, ooh, sexual. So not true. I have the best boyfriend in the world, and he slid into my DMs. From I guess just a nice photo or a provocative photo of, you, that, of your butt or your tits. No, but like just like I don't know. Probably it was in summer times. So probably a bikini pic or something. But that doesn't mean that he's right. a less value, low value man. Okay, but that's different to posting a lot of sexually explicit content uh, and <laughs> expecting to attract a high value man. Because again, but not really, again, because hold on, hold on. Again, just... for my sisters, I would definitely say you shouldn't be too sexual with your Instagram because you'll actually deter. Men who are well, I think you should tell your sisters that they should love themselves and that they should be able to feel free in their bodies. I'm with you. I'm and if with it's you. Attracting gross men.
they are not the problem. It's uh, these gross men that we need to put a hold on. Uh, and uh, that's that. I'm meeting you. Uh, all right. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye. So Thank what you. is a low value woman? Uh, apparently me. Why? Which is why I've been single for five years. I'm a single mum. I study. I have a job. And I don't have time for people, apparently. So I'm too much hard work. Like, I've tried my luck on dating apps. And I also stream online. And you get those odd guys that come in and just start ripping into me for being a single parent for, you know, okay, you've already had kids, you've already got a family, you know, you've got your people and whatnot, then you, you know, obviously I've had sex. And I'm open about that, like I was promiscuous. Where do you think the kid came from? Like, you know, but I made a choice to be single and I made a choice that I don't want to have sex, I don't want to date, and it's been five years now. And when I tell people that, the guys are just like, no, nah, I'm out, you know, no. All right, yeah. you sound like yeah, too much yeah. hard work. Yeah, and look, fair enough. Like, I think that's the that's where women have it really tough. Where if you do, uh, once you're say 32, you most women are past their prime in terms of attractiveness to men. Whereas men can grow into their prime well into their 30s. Um, so I think well, that's. I mean, where, you guys don't really mature until you're 25 anyway. So. Well, and then also in terms of what women select for in men, say financial assets, whatnot, um, that tends to come or that tends to peak later. Uh, whereas women's uh, youthfulness, fertility, beauty tends to peak a bit earlier. What would you say then to a young a young girl who's like 20 years old, being promiscuous, um, thinking hashtag equality, I can do. Oh, so me know, back in the day. All yeah, right. what yeah. Would, what uh, would, don't do it. No. <laughs> yeah, would you? Because um, I'm, I'm genuinely curious because I've also got a 20 year old no. sister. Yeah, what, look, what would I you don't say? know. I mean, I was free. I I did a lot. I you know I was obviously one time not protected, which is where the child came from, but. Um, Generally speaking, what makes a high value woman, I would say, you tell me whether you agree with this, I would say... Look, I consider myself like an awesome person, a great woman, and like I always, people always trying to hook me up with their mates, but then as soon as they find out, oh, she's a single mum, she's got a job, she's finishing her diploma, where's the time for me? And it's like, that's a fair yeah. question. Yeah. Because, yeah, if I was to date somebody, I would have time to, you know, I want to put in my time for them as well, but what they don't understand is I can't just drop my kid with somebody Facts. and grab a coffee or grab a beer with you you know like I need give me a week in advance plus you know I have a busy lifestyle so and that's where I would say let's say for example I had a son and he found uh, this beautiful woman who he connected with really well mm -hmm. but she was 30 and had a kid I would say drop her you'll find another woman who's who you, you connect would say with. that yeah yeah I would say drop her find another woman who is but how old's your son your hypothetical son. even if even if she was he was the same age oh really if she has a, if she has a kid I would say you'll find someone else who doesn't have a kid and but, then I think you should have a kid with her to okay. with your partner that's do you, do and that would be kids or no that would be my personal preference as well so if I was dating someone and she had a, a child I would say as much as you might be a lovely person I'm not interested yeah because of everyone's different to, everyone's got their own things like and people ask me as well oh well why don't you date single dads you're a single mum why don't you date single dads and I'm like because I don't need that sugar honey iced tea like sorry i don't know if i'm allowed to swear no, sorry, all right yeah i don't need that sh like i there's no dad in the picture so i don't have a crazy ex or custody battles or anything going on there you know like i don't have somebody attached as well it's yeah. just me and my little human you know and he's a pretty chill human so are you are you just quickly are you yeah. uh, like i guess if i were in your position i would be concerned that my son is it a son or a daughter a son son wouldn't have a strong masculine role model in his life does he have a... i'm not a very feminine person so you think you could I... play both both sides Dude, i grew up on a farm my neighbor her door handle broke i said i'll grab my toolbox like my family have taught well, me well then maybe a strong feminine role model and... well yeah i think i can be both um be both. but you know what i do get those doubts that crawl into my mind every now and again but um i've, I've got to do what i've got to do you know well, hey... and i'm not about to just date some random person just to have a bloke to be there in the life yeah yeah, yeah. you got to qualify properly yeah, yeah absolutely and I, hey. don't, I, I don't want you know people sometimes say to me oh so you're looking for a dad for your kid i'm like no i'm dating for me i don't need you to step in to be a father maybe you can become a friend and then eventually parent but i'm not looking for you like oh hey come on all right cool this is my kid um yeah, yeah so i'm gonna go to the bar see you yeah, later you like, take care of him. yeah, yeah. Like, it's nothing like that well hey so, i really appreciate your sorry, honesty yeah that's what i was like I don't really talk to me because i talk too much i had too no 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 this was work, lovely so. hey well i hope you enjoy your third red yeah, wine because it's a life. beautiful evening for Wait, it what's the high value man one what Have do you think makes a high value man real quick i i know what i what I'd, i think just somebody who respects my decisions that i've made obviously as a single parent which is very hard to come by apparently see me me personally i would disagree i Respectfully, I, I think that uh, a high value man 
would very reasonably view your position and say you're you're just not a, a quality mate for that person. For a high value man. Yeah. Okay, because I'm not a high value woman. Yeah. Yeah. As rough as that might sound. No, fuck, dude, I've heard it all. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I truly do respect your, your honesty no, and your that's straightforwardness. All right. yeah, yeah, but I would say I definitely I wouldn't date a guy that's still living at home with his mum with no Fact. job, not studying. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And then the people look at me and they go like, but you're a single mum. And I'm like, yeah, but I work and I study and I take care of shit. Like, yeah, so let me quickly so, roll off for you what I think makes a high value man. And you hey. tell me whether you agree or disagree. Okay. Uh, makes a lot of money. Um, is strong in all respects, so strong okay. emotionally, knows how to emotionally self-regulate, stoic temperament, uh, he knows when to take leadership, knows how to, to lead uh, the woman, um, knows how to provide an experience in that sense. Uh, what do we do physically, uh, socially as well? I think he has a strong social circle, he's respected amongst his peers, and I think that's quite attractive to, to women. Um, yeah, would you agree with all of those things so far? Like in maybe in the leading aspect though, maybe a bit more equality in both roles leading in a certain way. Like both both of you have an equal leadership role in the relationship, depending on what type of role you believe and yourself to be. Yeah, yeah, and maybe like depending on what the I don't domain think I could is. I handle somebody being like leading my whole life. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, yeah. you describe yourself as having that masculine presence as well, so maybe you would find someone who's more 50-50 with you, but yeah. me being... Maybe one day. Wish me luck. Yeah, yeah. good. I'll, I'll <laughs> say a prayer. Probably, I'll say a prayer. I want to interview somebody else. Yeah, no, have a lovely evening. Yeah. Take it. What's your name? Bianca. Bianca Rich. Nice to yeah. meet you, Bianca. Cool. Have a good Bye -bye. evening. Yeah. What makes you a high value woman? No, no, no. Okay. What makes me a high value woman? Yeah. I've worked my ass off. I have two degrees. I do everything that, you know, a man wants me to, but What's I also... That? What's that? What do you think what men do? want? I don't know, you, you're telling the story. Okay, I don't know, I'm really drunk right now, but I'm going to say... Oh, you're doing well. Oh, really? Oh, Thank you. I cook, I clean, and I work. And I don't complain about it. If, uh, if, you, if push comes to shove, would you prioritise your career or family? Family. <laughs> He's got a keeper. Yeah. What it's do you think makes a low value woman? I don't think any woman is low value. I think it just but depends on. If you're a high value woman, that implies there are some low value women. Not really. I think it depends on what you want to do. Like if you if you like prioritize having a family and all that kind of thing, that doesn't make you a low value woman. That just makes you where your priorities are. So if you aren't chasing your career, that's just your priority. Okay, can I can I? I'll change the question a bit. What do you think uh, gives men the ick? With women, what do you think turns a guy off? Insecurity. I see. If a woman is insecure, yeah. Yep. What else? That's really it. I think men are very body easy. Count. Body count, yeah. It's important. It's not important, but that just gives men the ink, which it shouldn't, but it just does. Uh, what about a masculine temperament? I feel like I have a pretty masculine temperament. <laughs> Would you say you have a feminine temperament? I do, yeah, yeah. I really see you guys make it good. Yeah, it she, she wears pants. Out. Yeah, I do. It balances out. You're, you're so stoked by that as well. Look yeah. That. Hey, that's a nice dress. Thank you so much. So you, much. Could, you could like spot it. Oh, it's your birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank What's you so your much. name? My name's Karina. Tell me, Karina. What is a high value woman? Me. What makes you a high value? My values. My appearance. Yeah. Really? Physical attractive. What would you rate yourself out of 10? 10? 11. That's my boyfriend. Yes. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Huh? What am I out of 10? Oh, f***ing, yeah, no, 150. That's right. 150, 150. Good man right there. Good man right there. What makes you a 10? Everything. I mean, look at me. Well, how are you going to improve if you're a 10? There's no room for improvement. I'm perfect. Right. Are you gonna disagree? No. No disagreement here. What's a high valued woman, babe? Oh, uh, the missus. The missus. One that cleans. <laughs> does the dishes. Um, does the ironing for, you know, business and all that. Sure. You know how to do that? He irons himself. Mate, he, madam, he needs a bit of help. Yeah, I need a help. I think, I think he needs a bit of help. That's why it's a woman's job. Ladies, what makes a high value woman? That knows her motherfucking place, which is not in the motherfucking kitchen. Men, learn how to fucking cook, get in the fucking 
kitchen. You're the fucking people that are the shit. Gents, hey, what makes a what makes a high value woman? Uh, honestly, just the personality and how they treat the man. Because you know, nowadays in society, like women want to be the independent one, but it's it's really about how the woman treats the man. Makes them feel like a king as well, as so we can treat them like a queen. Love, love, and That's I would it. add on to that. Gents need to become an inner king in order to allow their woman to be the queen. Because we're like we're like encapsulated in society. We're like, you know, women want to be the top G, but no, we gotta. Gents gotta be the top G. Yeah, Where's the Mascu masculinity? has gone. Hey, bring back traditional masculinity, yes, boys. Have a good right. night. Take care of yourselves. Real quick, what do you think makes a high value woman? High value woman. Yeah. Woman that wants to start a family, woman that loves her man's loyal to him. And a woman that sits there and sticks by him, man, in his ups and his downs and wants to create a future together. Simple as that. Bro, that's such a wholesome man, like answer. Yeah. Simple as that, Dude, boys. Mind plenty of common ground doing, with you. Man. Take care of yourselves, boys. What makes you a high value woman? I've got a good personality. I'm funnier than you. <laughs> I'm not convinced, hey. What makes a high value woman in your eyes? Um, a woman who is empowered. What does that look like? Whatever she wants. It's as simple gotta, as that. <laughs> you gotta give me something to work. What what do men select for in a partner? Oh <laughs> I don't know. This is I'm a hooker, so I Males don't find don't really look into finances with women as much as women look into I, finances I, I with males. Totally agree with you. Totally you agree know? with you. But then yeah. the flip side of that is like women men will tend to value physical attractiveness more than women will value it in men. So if a, if a broke dude is a low value man, would you then say that an ugly woman is a low value woman? Maybe to men, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Can like, we find common ground on that? Not really, but like, I see. In the sexual marketplace, the in the sexual yeah. marketplace. Yeah. 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 I mean, the I, yeah. yeah, I think there's a difference between value as like individuals, like we're all equally we all hold value as individuals, but within the sexual marketplace, there's definitely yeah, men select for different. certain things, women select for certain things. What what makes a high value woman? High value woman? Yeah. Respectful woman, like the Bible says. In a thousand girls, there's not one good. But in a thousand guys, there's one man is good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nah. Because no? I know sense. that you're preaching about Jesus Christ as yeah. the Son of God. Yeah, he is the Son of yeah. God. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What, what, what would... Does uh, Jesus have a take on what is a high value <laughs> woman? Um, I just guess someone that's just loving man and loving and cute and, and uh, like I said, respects their husband. No sex before marriage, they can wait for the right man. What would Jesus say is a high value man? High value man, someone that knows who Jesus Christ is. And lives that's, by Jesus Christ. Christ. Wait, what and, does that and, look like? And in the image of God, to keep his commandments. That's what it, that's what it looks like. To know him, to keep his commandments, that's all that he requires to be what, able to live like what God. About, what about if he lives like God, but he's broke? Is that, that's is that's he's, okay. That's he's a, still a high value man? Still high value ah, man. I disagree with you. That's all right, no, because <laughs> because no, because no, a broke man won't have as much ego and won't have as much greed. You know what I mean? So he's not there to, he's not going to be tempted to do other things. Do you know what I mean? You stay broke, I'll stay rich. Thank you, bro. You take care of yourself. Care, guys. See you, man. Have a good day. What makes a high value woman? Having brains and not listening to men. <laughs> I'd say that makes a low value woman to. We don't need to listen, if you to, don't men. listen to men. We don't, what do we need to listen to men for? An open minded person. Do you like. Do you, are you attracted to a, a man who can show leadership? I don't want to be with a man who's controlling and telling me what to do. I want to be able to live my own life. You Only know? controlling in the bedroom. What she said. <laughs> I'm with that. Would you say that on average uh, men find overweight women less attractive? It depends what it's their fetishes right are. <laughs> On average? <laughs> Honestly, I'd say, because I'd say that people would rather date someone who's skinny and fits in with standard norms of what society wants people to look like. I don't think it's just society though. I think there's also a, a nature element to it as opposed to nurture. If I was to ever, I don't know, earn more than him, my value would go down. He took it. Your, your My value would go down to him because I'm. Yeah. His, his perception of me probably changed. 
you know? I feel like that's makes so you say backwards that? though. Because I know yeah. it is backwards, but Yeah, why do you why do you think it's backwards? Because that is so old school these days. It should not matter who gets earns the most money. As long as you love them and as long as you have the same values, it should not matter. It should be together, but it happened, you know. You're connecting together. Yeah. How amazing. interesting is that, right? That, that it happened. Because so I've been trying to come at this from a lens of I'm curious. There are some things that I observe, like for example, divorce rates are way higher yeah. when the female makes more than the male. And because why might men, that be? Men's egos are threatened. I know, but, but the women initiate the divorces. 100%, something like something yeah. like eighty percent of divorces are initiated by women. Because they're not I don't know seeing why like they're being is. because they probably don't feel provided for in, yeah. in other okay. aspects of the okay. of the relationship. How interesting is that? Yeah, yeah. So that that's where I think it's great for Equality and everything like that. I get that. Yeah, but, but I think it's also very important, 100%. especially for young lads, to know if you want to be attractive, you do have to make a certain amount of money to provide and protect. And if you don't do that, you kind of lose the polarity. Yeah. You, you don't allow the woman to kind of drop into her feminine. Yeah. I reckon if it, yeah. So if I was to earn more than my partner, I think I don't know how he would handle that because I feel like he would be like, oh, what's the point of me being in this relationship, sort of thing. Yeah. But so then men, it's also men like, don't like being provided for a lot of the time. Yeah, or maybe provided they're... for in different ways, like yeah. cared yeah, yeah. and supported. 100%. They'd rather be, I think, nurtured than have a, a financial, well physically provided, well than a financial aspect. Yeah. I think someone who doesn't go clubbing every single weekend. She says while well, clubbing. So what is a high value? <laughs> oh, oh shit. I thought that was a man. Oh shit. I thought that was a man. What do you think makes a high value woman? Um, she, glo she goes out. It's okay. She goes out. She goes out with her friend. She goes out with her, like, by herself. But she doesn't give attention to every single man. You have a man at home waiting for you. Or you have a man waiting for you somewhere. I don't know where he's at. Yeah. He's not at home. Like, you're not together. But, like, he's somewhere. He's waiting for you. Don't go f giving attention to every f one, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm That's not you. fair. I have a question for you. Yes. You know, Mike, because I feel like we, we, we're cool with each other. I feel like I can ask okay. this. Come on. Why do you wear your pants like that when you have the top button undone? Um, I think I'm too short. If I wear a crop top like that, I don't think it's doing too much. And I'm just like, you know what? I have a body. But if I was in a relationship with you, that would be a red flag for me. Are you sure? Yeah. Because my boyfriend would be proud of me. He's like, that's my girl. You can do whatever she... Maybe that's why you two are together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, and he would be like, whatever f you can do. But she's my girl. I know she's coming home with me. And I know I'm coming home with him. Yeah. If she likes wearing whatever she likes and she's confident about it, she's okay. But if she's giving eye to every single guy that at the club, like... That's, 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 that's too like seeking. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. too much. Yeah. I'm wearing something like this because I like my body. But in general, I would say that uh, a low value woman dresses overly promis or overly sexually. I don't think it's about dress up, it's about the mentality. But I think you reflect your mentality in how you dress. Do you think that a high value woman sticks with her man when her man isn't doing well? Absolutely. Like, let's say, for example, you had a missus, you were doing really well financially, she loves that you're the provider projector, and then you lose your ambition or something goes poorly in your business and you're a brokey. Do you think that a high value woman sticks with you through that? Absolutely. One of the best quotes I've ever learned from someone, he goes, mate, the truest, the, probably the best test for a woman is regardless of everything and what he has, right? They stick by them. And the true test of a man is when he has everything he sticks by his woman. Ah, that's Does that a make nice sense? one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, so that's a very nice one. The true test is when he has nothing, she sticks by him. Yeah. And when he has everything, because it's easy for, like, it's honestly, without hand of doubt, like, it's easy for a man who's flaunting with money, has the cash, all that sort of shit. It's like, not saying it's relatively easy, but it's easier to attract those things. Yeah, yeah. Make sense? I, I think, I think but so. But it's harder to keep it. I think, uh, you know, we did an episode on Andrew Tate recently, and, okay. and lots of people think of, or at least young lads think of Andrew Tate as the top G, high value man. Okay. But I've been toying with the idea of, well, is a high value man promiscuous or does he commit to one woman? And, and what, you just said, what you just said around um, the high value man, he, he kind of sticks with the, with the one. Yeah. Um, and I think also 
maybe in the same way that a high value woman would stick with her man when things don't go so well for him yeah. financially, let's say he loses his ability to provide and protect. Maybe a high value woman, uh, maybe a high value man sticks with her, with his woman when she loses her physical attractiveness Absolutely. with age, instead of moving on, on to, instead of pulling a Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, so The Way of the Superior Man, it's good a book, book by David Dieter. Yeah, good book. It's one thing that a lot of people should read. I've read it myself. But it, it contradicts a lot of things around, like, you just go and hunt. You can do whatever you want, but ultimately it's really the connection between you have between the male and female because opposite poles, right? Mm, the polarity. The polarity. polarity. Male energy, yeah. feminine and energy. I think we're losing that. We're losing we're, respect, we're losing uh, a respect for that polarity and the importance of it. Yeah. You read it too? Yeah, great book. Good on bro. you, man. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, thanks Appreciate for sharing, man. I'm She's a high value You're woman. She's a sweat. Look at the cut of them. There's a high Adam, value woman. What, what makes a high value woman? Me. <laughs> what, what, yeah, so what high. makes you what makes you a high value woman? Oh, don't ask me that right now. Oh, please. That's a good She's question. Good class, integrity. Quit. Good oh, class, integrity. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. nice. What Intelligence. Else? Yeah. Power, control. Good looking. Strong. No, we're not Strong. about superficial bullshit. No, but we're, hey, about that's we're about substance. We're about substance. You also want to hear okay. what makes a high value man in just a moment. But no, I don't want to know about the men, the be. women. Okay, so what we need, we need, we need brave women. We need strong women that stand up for themselves. Women in who society. can follow a masculine lead. No, oh, no, 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 no. Women who work hard and earn their own way in that's life, right. yeah. and what, that stand up for themselves. Yeah. What, what would you say to someone who says that they're attractive to submissive women? <laughs> Yeah, but they're, they're a controlling person. What, 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 what would you say to a woman who says she's uh, attracted to a leading, a man who knows how to lead? No, we don't want that. We want women that lead. She's obviously she's not empowered. She's not, not empowered. Maybe she's not lacking. coming from an, a confident place. Could have been abused, could have been violated. Uh, or uneducated or just suppressed. But generally speaking, we, generally speaking, men are more assertive than women are. And no. Really? I haven't met us before. Yeah. No, no, you might. Oh, you might. Yeah. Hey, are, are, are you? Are you? Are you, are you? Do you have husbands or boyfriends? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We're not defined who, by who, that. Who, who, who wears the pants Clearly, in the relationship? they're not here, no, so no, no. they're at home doing no. what are they, they should masculine? do. Are they masculine? We're a team. Do you describe no, them as masculine? They are masculine. Yes. Yes. Yeah, masculine. Masculine. They're good men. They're good men. Real men. We wouldn't be with them. Yeah. So, because I'm curious about. If you, usually when there's someone who is masculine in the relationship, if it's the woman, then she'll tend to attract a more feminine guy. So do you find that when you're ah! no way? <laughs> when, no, that's far from it, mate. No, that's no. far from it. You know what? Us, us girls here, we you guys agree. Are yeah. And we, we you know what? Show, we, we, show, we, man. We bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit. You know what? We respect every side of the equation here, okay? We we love our Are community. you talking about us as women? As, us as women, you know what? We what? love we love our men. Don't get us wrong, we love our men, but you know what? We like to stand up for ourselves. We're our own people. That's we're, that, exactly. What yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. we're out? What do you think we're out? Yeah, but about? I think generally speaking, men find it attractive when a woman knows how to take the, exactly. the, follow, the follow position. Exactly. Not, nah, no. not the lead. No, not if you the want lead. to, if you no, want to attract a, a feminine, years married a feminine dude. and not an issue. We're out doing our own thing. They're doing their exactly. own. Thing. We're a team. We're, We're not going to shake yeah. exactly. what's a, each hey, other. Hey, what's a, what's a big turn off for for a woman in a long term male partner? Someone who's controlling, and likes yeah. to tell Control. you what to do. Controlling yeah. is the thing. Yeah. It's a key controlling word. Controlling. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A, woman, a woman who's it's too 50, assertive 50, 50. is a turn off. Exactly. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah. Both it's definitely. 50, 50. You know what? But hey, women women tend to team. find women tend to find assertive men attractive. Maybe not you guys. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Couple of final questions. Um, do you think that, generally speaking, a guy with zero financial security is kind of unattractive to most women? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. No, I don't want, I want someone who's going to find their own way. Not yeah. My mother brought us up to be, be dependent on no man, earn your own way in life and do what you want. Travel, but be dependent on no one but yourself. Yeah, I guess my concern is that if young women are, are given that messaging too much, they'll actually lose the ability to fall into and trust the masculine lead when it's there. 
What are we here? Is this the church of the f***ing ladder game? Hey, hey, Rob, that, I want to, I want, I want, I want to flip that last one and just say, do you think that it's a turn off to most guys when a woman is overweight? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, because that's shallow, superficial bull. Yeah, but it's just how many shallow. I wouldn't say, but it's not so shallow. It's, I think it's a reflection of character and yeah. personal control and, and personal most care. Men aren't attracted yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Well, heavy women. Is, yeah, I agree. Yeah, no. Hey, have a lovely evening, ladies. You were you were a joy. I say this with love because I feel like we're on that level. Okay. On average, men are attracted to skinny women. Okay, yeah. On average, but there are men who are going to find, for example, your physique very attractive. Right? Can we find common ground on that? Yeah. I mean, thick thighs save lives. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the same way as well. But that's, some, that's, that's in the, standard, though. Yes, oh. but on average, women will find muscly dudes more attractive than skinny dudes. On average. Come on, come on, you gotta give me something. I mean, if they're a bit too muscly, then no. And if they're a bit too skinny, then no. It's like there's like in between. Somewhere in between, okay. Okay, and same goes for women, I would say. On average, there's a balance. Too skinny, not attractive. Too big, not attractive. On average, on average. But for some people, thick thighs save lives. Hey, can we find common ground on money? Women value money. In a long term male partner, they don't. Yes, yes, they don't want yes, a brokey. Yes, yes. Come on, you don't want no brokey. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'm I mean, wrong. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. Let's go long term hair body, and also acknowledging that everyone has their individual preferences. Yeah. So we can observe an average. You might have your own preferences. You're gonna have your own. You're gonna. I'm gonna have my own, and they might deviate from the average. I feel as well like this is a place where deviations are celebrated. But I am asking the question, on average, men selecting for a long-term female partner, what would they select for? What so would they value? Like, get, like what I just said, like someone who made them feel emotionally safe, like support them. Communication. Yeah, communicate with yeah. them. Support you said them. nurturing. Their career, nurturing. Yeah. Um, uh, like, yeah, someone that makes their home feel like a home. So, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to think of the, is there anything else that I would add to that? Maybe um, understanding, I think nurture, nurture understanding, is like um, like caregiver, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think also, I actually have pretty traditional values, so like I, yeah, yeah. I do believe in that. That's so provider. interesting because I would say this is very untraditional. I know. Right? We're living in a modern world, though. Okay, so you're traditional with a with a modern spice. Traditional, I feel like modern. I'm so, more like into the polyamorous, multiple partners kind of thing. So I, I guess one one. Uh, one thing that I think men select for in a long-term female partner, on average, again, acknowledging that the, each to their own, is women who aren't overly sexual in public places. Okay. On, but it's that's on average, right? It's probably so this is coming from a place of respect, I hope. It's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, can we find common ground on that? But generally yeah. speaking, yeah. Maybe. It's, it's it's definitely true. Really like like this is like the very right. the kinkiest place. And so this is where. If you behave like this, and this is what you're happy with, you'll attract the type of man who's interested in this type of thing, right? But that won't necessarily be the average man. Uh, it's lucky I don't want a man. <laughs> lucky I don't want a relationship, because that, I don't, that sounds shit. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap for today's combos. I hope you enjoyed them and have a clearer sense of what you think makes a high value woman and a high value man. Moving forward, I'd like to get into the habit of closing out each episode with a learning or a takeaway of some sort, as well as a challenge. So starting from today, for me, it was definitely a deeper appreciation for the importance of framing. So how you frame a question, the context that you give it, the rapport building you do before you actually ask the question can literally be the difference between a productive conversation and an unproductive conversation. And you can see that in particular in the last few conversations from today's episode, where we're asking radioactive level questions or pointing out particularly uncomfortable truths that could be interpreted as confrontational or offensive, but I had the right energy, the right tonality, and I'd done my best to signal that I was coming from a place of curiosity, respect, and almost playfulness. And as well, that it was okay for us to disagree, I'd respect them through that. And as a consequence, the questions were well received. So my challenge for you in the coming weeks is whenever you're about to have a difficult conversation, focus on your framing. So check your energy and intentions, make sure that you're operating from a place of deep-seated respect and curiosity, 
curiosity and build some rapport if possible. Give whatever context is necessary to make the person you're speaking with feel safe such that they can bring their walls down and you can genuinely connect and then see what happens, right? We literally can put our lives and the world around us in order one conversation at a time. And hopefully you can sense that in terms of why we do what we do here at CGC. So it's truly amazing how deep you can go with people when you both have the right energy and you framed the conversation correctly. Tough questions don't have to degenerate into combat, nor do they have to be swept under the rug. Instead, we can confront them and work through them together to find common ground. Next episode, we've got 100,000 YouTube subscribers special for you. We're doing something a little bit different. We'll be doing a Q&A, reliving some of our best moments to date and also reacting to some of our biggest critics on TikTok. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed and you like what we're doing, I'd recommend you hit that subscribe button. With that said, ladies and gents, keep thinking deeply, keep refining your worldview and keep stress testing those ideas and beliefs through conversation, not just with people that you agree with, but almost more importantly, with those who challenge you. Curiosity is not a crime. Your voice matters and dialogue is the way. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Are you the bloke from TikTok? Nah, nah, nah. nah. Oh, you don't, 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 don't. Are you the bloke off Grindr? Yeah. You yeah. got me. Yeah. He's got it. Like Instagram, TikTok and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my guy. Yeah. Long lady, all, all your shit. Thanks, man. Dude, you are the fing best. Iranian <laughs> shit. You're fing. Oh my god. Hey, what's your name? Conti. My name Conti? is Conti. Oh, nice to meet you, Conti. The shit you do is fing unreal, man. You let people speak the or not. People like you need to fing stay out there, dude. Hey, I appreciate it, brother. Take care of yourself. See you. Ladies and gents, one final thing to round out today's episode. I have recorded a song called Not Your Simp. I'm going to play a little 15 to 30 second snippet here for you. It's very much inspired by the conversations that we had in today's episode, as well as some of my personal dating experiences. And I'm going to drop it on Apple Music and Spotify. When I do that, I'll, um, I'll notify everyone on my personal Insta. Maybe I'll pop that up on the screen now if you are interested in that type of thing. But here is a little snippet of the track. Let's go. Hey, I'm sick of your shit. Cause I ain't your sin Oh, I got respect And you just a bitch So pull in your head Get the f*** out my bed You f***ing you hot But I'll take her instead Yeah, yeah, you know I will Red pill Won't split no bills